YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and as you can tell, I made it back from Chicago because I'm recording new stuff, and this is actually post the Ten Isle Mercenaries update. So there's a few things that have changed in uh, Total War Attila, and uh, basically they added a bunch of Celtic mercenaries as a free LC for anybody who is looking for some free LC. So Obviously, you can probably hire them from regions, I'm guessing, around the Isles of Britannia. Um, you can go check out a list of this at the update. I will leave one in the comments, a link to it, and also one in the description, so check that out. Uh, you can see the other changes there. So let me give you a very quick, brief overview, and then I want to hop into a battle. So you can be like, hey, are you going to show us these new factions? I will. Um, I'm not going to get into them at the moment, but basically who you get is the Caledonians. You also get the uh, Ebdonis. And uh, so... The Ten Isle Mercenaries was a free update, then there was a DLC, so a paid DLC, which is the uh, Celtic culture pack, so you get the Caledonians, as mentioned, uh, the Abdonians, and then you also get the Picts. So that's the uh, the factions that you get. There are a lot of new units that they come with, um, mostly because they kind of had to bring in like a whole base roster for these guys. though. To be fair, some of the units are very similar to some of their Germanic counterparts, but obviously different names and probably slightly different skins. That is some very cheap crossbow infantry. Uh, and like I said, I'll, I'll kind of get more into these guys as we move in, but as you can see, they're all going to be infantry heavy and uh, melee lacking, um, or cavalry lacking, uh, should be what I say there. But uh, that's kind of the general gist of those factions. I The reason why I'm not giving you an update on them right now is I need a chance to kind of check them out. Um, and I can go ahead and... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, let me just bring you a separate episode tomorrow. I know it's a little bit late, but like I said, I was getting back from my trip. So I have a replay to show you um, this uh, today, and it's actually going to be Sassanids versus, I want to say it was the Allens. And if you line these two factions up, on paper, in my opinion, the Allens are the better faction. I'll explain why, but let's take a look at what's changed with the Sassanids, a few key things. Uh, the Spa Bed General actually gets more ammo now, so he, he's basically a... Uh, a horse archer unit with limited ammo, so only eight, but it's still a decent number of shots um, with decent missile damage with access to flaming, heavy, and whistling. Um, he also has the scare effect. It is a whopping 900 uh, talent unit, but you get a very nice base uh, melee attack damage and a very good charge bonus. And with that scare effect, if you put this as a brace general, you get a plus nine versus cav, which normally this unit I don't believe has any bonus versus cav. Um, and I, and I want to say they gave these guys a heavy Spatha too, so the damage is uh, better. So, essentially the, the Spa Bed is actually a somewhat viable choice now. Very nice health, it can shoot uh, at enemy cavalry units to weaken them up or draw them into a fight, which can be very handy. I'm not saying this unit is the bee's knees or anything, I'm just saying what they improved. And the Savar and Sardar got, uh, I want to say, some armor added to it, or maybe it's just melee defense, I don't remember. So they, they tweaked these two units slightly. Um, as far as the Persian nobles, uh, these guys use a club, and all club ba or say a club, a mace, kind of like a club, all mace damage has been changed. It was actually kind of backwards, I guess, in the f when it was first released. It used to be 20 base damage and 5 armor piercing. It's now been flipped. It's 5 base damage, 20 armor piercing, which is a very helpful change for the Sassanids. Now, does it all of a sudden make them a power faction? I doubt it. I, I really don't see the Sassanids probably moving much up the charts, but they will be a little better. Mostly because the Sogdian warriors now, these guys, I don't know if their melee attack was originally that high, but it's not bad. Their charge bonus is okay-ish, it's not good. Um, but uh, this unit's going to be quite vulnerable to missiles, but they will be able to deal out a lot of damage to heavily armored units. Where you won't want to get them in a fight is against probably units like, um, that don't have as much armor but are high attack. So maybe like Thracian, Sarmatian Warband, Gothic Warband, all those are going to be units you want to avoid with these guys. But they should do pretty well against, say, like, Protectores Domestici or uh, Noble Germanic Swordsmen. Keep in mind, though, that those units have more health and better missile block chances. So the Sogdians may do well against them in melee, but that's if you're not getting splattered by Germanic archers. I was a little disappointed to see there was nothing changed about the Royal Persian archers. I think these guys need 200 range if they're going to be viable. And even at a price of 850, I'm not going to say they would be great, but if they had 200 range... These guys can eat a lot of enemy archer fire without taking damage, and then they also have this brace or steady effect, which seems very weird for archers, but it actually gives them more missile block chance and sealed defense, which means that it makes it even harder for enemy missiles to affect these guys, and it's already fairly difficult for enemy archers to deal with them. So they would be quite expensive. If you had to bring two of these guys, they'd be about the same cost as 
probably like six or seven Germanic archers. So it's not ideal, but um, I guess that maybe the counter would be that Sassanid infantry is relatively cheap, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Armenian slingers appear to have gone down in price. I think they were 450. These are still going to be a very nice unit unless they've changed something else about them. It's just that they expend their ammo quickly and it has to be targeted well. Um, as far as any other changes, it looks like Persian mounted warriors maybe took a small price cut. Persian scouts and uh, Lakhmid scouts both took a price cut to reflect their usefulness. Uh, camel Klebinari, camel, uh, Persian Camel Raiders, and Sogdian Camel Raiders are all still absolutely worthless. Um, these units just don't serve any practical purpose in the current state of the game. Uh, I, they would have to give the Camel Klebinari a spear or something to make them worth it. If so, this might be a decent unit. Um, but since it carries an axe or whatever it is, it's really not good in a, in a grind out versus infantry. Uh, and it's, it, I don't know, I, I just don't see, these three units here in my opinion are still kind of worthless in multiplayer, but would be quite fun in campaign. Now, from a shock cavalry standpoint, there's been some interesting changes, I don't fully understand it. Um, and basically what we have is the, is the it says in the patch notes, the later um, Sassanid cataphracts have gotten an elite lance and caused more damage to cavalry. I'm assuming that probably means the Push Degbon cataphracts and the Gyanavspar certainly get it. Can someone tell me whether the Griff Panvar also got the Elite Lance? Um, Savarn Cataphracts and Persian Cataphracts look like they've taken a price decrease, which actually makes them potentially useful as well. Uh, the Bow Cavalry took a... I think these guys took a price decrease, but still no Parthian shot. They are somewhat fast and could maybe be useful, but still questionable. And these other two horse archers I don't see paying off either. No change to Savar and Cav. Elephants had a change. They are better versus cavalry. They still die crazy easy to missiles. Obviously they can wreck infantry if they get a chance, but good luck, you're going to get hammered by missiles. That's really the only changes you're going to see to the Sassanids. Now why do I say the Alans are a better faction? Uh, the Alani General got a buff in this patch, picking up the Elite Lance, which was already a pretty decent unit. Um, it looks like Germanic nobles are cheaper now in general. Noble Germanic Swordsmen are still the same price, roughly, it looks like. Um, but in any case, uh, the, the, this Allens have a great roster. They've got these um, Sarmatian Warband, which are a fantastic unit. They've got access to the Germanic Archers, which are still great in this patch. Um, I mean, still a, a bargain at four, uh, 200 range there. And then they have access to some good cavalry. Now, Germanic Horsemen used to be the beast of the, the, the battlefield. As far as Horsemen go, you just gold shove these guys, and they were insane. Uh, they took a mass decrease from heavy to ma uh, medium. They lost their regular spear and went to a short spear, so they now do less damage versus cavalry. Germanic horsemen were basically taken from the top of the food chain and thrown to the sharks at the bottom of the food chain. However, the Alanis still make out like bandits because they have noble Alani cav and noble Germanic horsemen, both of which are going to be great cavalry in this patch for the price. And that's partly because Takmata cavalry also took a heavy nerfing. Um, so these are going to be some cavalry to fear, Good thing is they're more expensive, um, but it's still going to put certain factions, mostly Germanic ones, uh, who have these type of units at some, I think, advantage still over other factions, but we'll have to see how that plays out. It's still very early in the game. Um, I also want to say that all Sarm uh, Sarmatian Cataphracts picked up the Elite Lance, so these two units should have that. Um, and then I want to say all Nomadic Horse Archers should have gotten Parthian shot, but it looks like that may be applied to the Huns. Let's see. I know I'm not talking about the Huns right now, but I'm just curious now that I've mentioned it. Uh, here we are. Yes, they all have Parthian shot as far as I can see. So Hunnic Horse Archer is going to be slightly more viable now. Uh, the Huns as a faction, though, the Uar Warrior, and I'll just mention this real quick before I forget, Uar Warriors lost 10 bonus versus infantry, both varieties. So it's going to make them a little less infantry spammy, and a few of their cavalry got a slight buff, um, though they're still not going to be fantastic. Um, as far as I can see. Again, I may be wrong. But anyway, let's go watch the battle between the Alans and the Sassanids. I, I, as you can see, I'm just desperate for the Sassanids not to suck because I kind of like them as a faction for some reason. I have no idea. I know nothing about like <laughs> Persian history or anything else like that, but they just seem like a cool faction on here, so I guess I, I feel like I'm gunning for them. Oop, wrong replay. <laughs> You're getting a little bit of hint of what's going to be coming in the next video. <laughs> that would be West Rome versus the Visigoths. Let's uh, actually get out of here before I, I, I clicked on the wrong one. Let's quit the replay. Um, so let's end that replay. And by the way, when you quit a replay, uh, it says defeat regardless of whether you were actually defeated. 
so that shouldn't give away how that one's going to end. So don't think that because it showed that necessarily means I'm getting beaten, but because I'm saying it doesn't necessarily mean that I win either. So, Sassanids versus Allens on the Swamp. My opponent brings what I would consider to be a very questionable Allen army. I was expecting a potentially very strong Allen army and was expecting to be at a very big weakness here, but there's a few units I wanted to try just out of speculation, even though I know they stink. I wanted to bring the Royal Persian Archers. I do not see these guys being a viable choice very often, if ever. Um, they do have a redonkulous amount of ammo. They also have recently uh, been affected by a change to bows, which gives an extra 10 bonus versus infantry with heavy shot. These guys do have a very nice missile block chance. They also have a club. If their melee attack was not so low, these guys would actually be somewhat formidable in melee versus heavily armored infantry. However, they are not, and <laughs> they're still vulnerable to cavalry. Uh, they have a lot of ammo, though. That's their saving grace. Um, not that it's enough to save it at that price, but they have 26 ammo. Let's take a look at the rest of my units. I wanted to try out some Pushtigban Cataphracts. I haven't used these guys much. They are very heavy shot cab and also very cool units. So there's the Pushtigban. I've got uh, two units of Persian Cataphracts. This is my Spabet General, a very, very sweet looking unit. What the Sassanids lack in decent units, they seem to make up for in awesome looking units. And there's the uh, turban wielding Persian Brigade. I've got three of those, two on this flank, one on the other. Here's my uh, Persian Cataphract, you can see a much lighter version. Still nice charge. My main line is, uh, consists of Dialamite Warriors. And uh, like I said, my two Royal Archers are in the center. And then this, this flank is basically symmetric except that it's one Persian Brigade. And here's my Pashtik buns. Let's go take a look at the um, enemy army. It's going to be kind of hard for me to do that with the camera off because his army may be a little trickier, but I will get you some close-ups. So here, uh, he's got quite a few Sarmatian Cataphract Archers. These guys have a pretty good melee damage, but their melee attack is really quite crappy. Um, and their charge bonus is also quite crappy. Now, d pretty nice health for a Missile Cav, but they're also very slow because they're Cataphract Archers. Um, and they're listed as medium bow cavalry, so they're actually pretty catchable. Um, He's got, let's see, one, two, five, well, so there's five there, so it looks like I see seven cataphract archers, three Germanic bows, or actually here's one Germanic bow, another Germanic bow, and another Germanic hunter. I think both of these are the 150 range variety. As far as melee cav, Alani horsemen, Alani horsemen, elite Sarmatian cataphracts, so three Alani horsemen, I see three elite Sarmatian uh, cataphracts. So these guys are going to have an elite lance and going to have more damage versus cavalry, but they are going to be outclassed by my Pushtek Bonds, uh, as far as I can tell. And then he has an Alani General, which is a solid choice. It's a heavy shot cav. Um, its stats don't look super impressive, but it has pretty good health, and, and this can be a devastating unit, especially if you have the Brace uh, General. And I'm really finding the Brace to be probably the most useful <laughs> um, general characteristic in the game. Let's get some close-ups uh, without the uh, stuff. Uh, basically, my opponent keeps pulling back to the back of the map because he doesn't want to face my army head-on. He wants to skirmish, but I'm spreading out and forcing him into the corner. See so, yeah, that? There's his uh, elite Sarmatian cataphracts. Again, very cool-looking units. Um, general state of Attila right now, in my opinion. Uh, there's so I've I've gotten to see a little bit of videos from, and honestly, I was, I was quite busy, and I want to watch videos from others. I've seen some of Maximus's videos about the Celtic pack. The fact that they can all guerrilla deploy is, it, it sounds cool, right? Yeah, sweet, guerrilla deployment. It's like the, um, yeah, oh man, now I'm going to forget their name. It's like, ah oh man, what was that faction? Uh, it's right on the tip of my head. Hattori. It's like the Hattori in Shogun 2, right? They can deploy all over the place. Great, that's going to be a lot of fun. Or like the guerrilla units for Spain and Napoleon Total War. going to be a ton of fun. Um, it, it sounds like fun. It's one of those things that's theoretical fun. Um, so yeah, you can see here, uh, I'll put the overview up so you can kind of watch me. Uh, I'm going to be moving in to surround my opponent. Um, so yes, yes, theoretically sounds like fun, but uh, here's the problem. If you watch one of the videos Maximus put up, literally the two armies can deploy outside their boxes, and he demonstrated on a video where the two armies can literally deploy on top of each other, which resulted in, I think, like a 1 minute and 30 second battle, because his units literally started on top of each other in combat. Um, it's a very weird thing to have done. And I, again, I get that it would be fun in campaign for all those units to be able to deploy uh, all over the map, but I, I think that they probably made a mistake um, by letting that same functionality flow straight into multiplayer. Uh, it's just going to be very odd. Uh, so I definitely disagree with that move. Um, 
some of the balancing changes, uh, in my opinion, were good, and there's some repricings, and I definitely think that it's going to make the Germanic factions slightly weaker. Um, they were way too strong. I don't think that it's going to be a perfect fix, and it's, I think, mainly because a lot of times whenever, whenever we, the players, get really mad and complain at something, and I'm guilty of this, um, I complain about units a lot, uh, sometimes, uh, so, and it's okay, we all do, uh, well, some of us do, maybe there's some of you saying I don't, early be alone, I, I get it, most of us are apt to complain about units that we think are crazy, um, and then what usually happens, generally, is that Creative Assembly will listen, and then over-nerf them, and that's definitely the case, like, I mean, Germanic horsemen are okay-ish now, but I mean, they really were, like, they were whacked with a nerf, which, to be honest, I'm kind of fine with. I, I think they've kind of been put in their place, and the, most of those factions still have noble Germanic cap, which is still going to be quite good, so I'm okay with it in this case. Um, Tagmata cap took a heavy nerfing, but some of the Roman cap got a little better, like Equites Promoti. Uh, they're still going to get beat down by uh, noble Germanic horsemen, but... Since all of this happened, I, I I definitely think that it will rebalance the game a little better. I'm curious to try out some of the new campaign changes as well. So supposedly the AI is uh, not going to be as bad about chasing you from Persia to uh, the the Straits of Gibraltar with uh, stacks when you're a horde. Um, so we're, we're hoping to see improvements there. And we'll just kind of see how it goes. Spears are supposedly a little more resistant, and a lot of them have picked up a heavy spear. Like many spearmen have picked up more bonus versus cav. Um, they still die massively to the charges of, um, like, say, shock cavalry, but they ought to be more useful against uh, melee cavalry in prolonged camp, uh, combat. So, just a quick summary. I think there were some things that were done that were very good. There's a few things that were done that are a little questionable, and there's a few things that weren't done that probably should have been. I think one of those things is, if you look at the factions in Attila, some of them definitely have an identity. Like if you look at the Sassanids, they are shock cavalry beast. And they boast uh, the best shock cavalry in the game. So it's a good identity for them. Their infantry suffers, and their archers are quite expensive as a result. And they have access to fairly limited melee cav that's got fairly limited usefulness. If you look at the Germanic factions, they have great archers, they have great infantry, and they still have great cavalry. They have it all. So, I think that when it comes to balancing, there's no need to get into like this crazy, in-depth, detail list of balancing. It might work out fairly well if the Creative Assembly might just want to focus on how do the factions stack up against each other. Uh, you can see my Persian archers pouring fire into the enemy cab. My opponent's going to charge me. He's got two Alani horsemen, and they're going to wreck my Dilemite warriors. I am hoping, though, for some of these javelins to do their damage. And then I'll just counter charge with some Pushtake Bonds and then uh, bring in more Dialamites in a moment to support, and then also bring in these Persian Cataphracts. The water did slow down his Alani Horsemen, and definitely uh, slowed down the impending doom of my Dialamites, which is going to allow them to actually get some kills. Where's my Dialamite Warriors? It's not really wanting to switch over to them in this blob. Here it goes. So they're going to get a few kills, but the counter charges from my, my shock cavalry, especially these Pushtag Buns, uh, who have the Elite Lance, they will get some kills. Not a ton in drawn out combat, but their health is very good um, compared to the Alani Horsemen. So, and they have very nice armor as well. My opponent is pouring in the Flaming Shot, but it's actually hurting the morale of his men, which is quite low, whereas the morale of my Pushtag Buns uh, is quite a bit better. So he's going to be hurting his own men here more than my own because he's firing into their backs. Friendly Fire is very much alive in Attila and something to be aware of, and my opponent is definitely doing me a favor here. Uh, his odd army choice and then firing into the backs of his own men like this is, is certainly not a good plan. So just as a tip to help people improve, you definitely don't want to do that. Uh, he's trading fire with my Persian archers over here and hasn't caused a single casualty and probably won't for quite some time. And my Persian archers here actually kind of wander into this melee. I don't know if any of them get killed from it, but again, my uh, I'm going to actually switch them back over to standard shot. The Persian archers have the steady ability, which actually gives them increased um, missile resistance, which is very handy on top of the fact that they're already very missile resistant, but of course their price is very, um, very difficult. Uh, I actually killed this unit of Sarmatian Cataphract archers with my Spabed, and then it came back from routing, so I've already got 29 kills with my Spabed. 
to my general, and then I got my Pushtag Bonds. The Persian Brigade has a very nice attack and a decent discharge. These guys are meant to help tank out damage against enemy cavalry, and I think they will serve well in that role. You can see my Pushtag Bonds, with the help of my Dialamites, have crushed the Alani Horsemen. Um, but my opponent continues to fire at me, so I'm going to have to move forward. Dialamite Infantry and Shock Cavalry are all fairly weak to missiles, so my opponent will get a considerable number of kills if I sit here and take this fire. Uh, my Persian Archers, though, would actually probably easily kill almost all of his horse, uh, uh, horse Archers and Archers if given the time to do so. I don't think that his guys would do a whole lot of damage to me unless he did a whole lot of um, concentrated fire, and he would spend all of his ammunition in doing so. Um, so, Persian Archers, that is kind of a redeeming quality for them, but their price is just it is just forbidding. You're almost better off to just bring Armenian Slingers, who have a pretty good missile block chance as well, and are just a lot cheaper. But again, this was just because I liked them, I wanted to try and use them regardless of whether they were good, and so I brought them, and it's a risk I took, and it actually pays off okay-ish here. So I'm going to push my opponent, who's back here on this uh, small hill, out of the swamp. It was a pretty smart position for him to take. He fell back for a long time, which some people may dislike, but I think it was the right move. Uh, he gets his Alani Horseman charged, and then I get my Push Dagbon charged over here, which is very bad. And they get charged by his Elite Sarmatian Cataphract, so that's, that's going to be kind of bad. But I do get to uh, use my Persian Brigade and another unit of Push Dagbon to support. And then he's basically got his Archer Blob back here. I'm going to bring a regrouped uh, Pushtagbun Cataphract back into his Alani General. Uh, my guys will definitely lose, but at least we'll start to cause some damage. And he's, again, firing on his own men, including his General, who is a shock cavalry which is very vulnerable to missiles. And you can see my Pushtagbun gets some kills, but he's also killing some of his own men. And this is going to allow my Persian or Dalamite Warriors to get into combat with his General uh, without being charged because uh, my opponent's running away there. So again, across the board, his Elite Sarmatian Cataphracts are getting mobbed by my infantry because he didn't have any infantry, so to speak. He was going for more of a skirmish build, and it's not really working out for him at the moment. His archers really aren't causing a great deal of uh, painful damage to my army. My spa bed actually also... Um, I used the scare ability when I rear-charged this Elite Sarmatian Cataphract and then also used Brace, which gives my general now a small bonus versus cavalry. And uh, his elite Sarmatians didn't get a charge, so my Spobbit's actually going to tear them down, though he is under heavy archer fire and starting to take some losses. Um, he, he is a pretty tanky unit, but uh, still not what we want going on here. Uh, but at this point, uh, the, all the melee forces basically, except for this one elite Sarmatian, have broken, and the Persian Brigade becoming very handy here at helping to tank out extra damage in that fight. And then my spa bed can basically just charge in with impunity because none of these units can face him in melee combat. They're all very squishy units. None of them have a bonus versus large. And uh, again, now he's going to be firing into the backs of his mo own men, which gives the scared effect. My Dalamites get a nice javelin volley here, and I mean, this is pretty much going to be all she wrote for the, uh, for the Allens. So, in this case, again, don't be fooled by this video. I, I think that the Sassanids have gotten better, uh, but the, uh, the Allens are certainly a better faction. My opponent should have picked a better army. Uh, I say should have. I, I like that he picks something different. It's fun. I pick something different too. So I say he should have. I'm kind of glad he didn't. I, I like seeing the variety. But if he wanted to be more competitive, he should have picked a different army. Um, and the same thing for me. If I wanted to be more competitive, I wouldn't have picked the Sassanids. Um, so, that, I mean, that goes both ways. Two-way street there, folks. Uh, but yeah, the the Alani, um, or, or the Alans have a capability to be a great, um, a great faction. So let me just show you here. Let's reset. You can get an Alani general. Uh, Noble Germanic Swordsman still going to be a solid core, but the Sarmatian Warband also a good choice. I mean, you could even mix it up a little bit if you want. You know, get some of these guys uh, as infantry. You can bring some Agathyrsi Warriors, but I wouldn't. Definitely get you some uh, Germanic Archers. These guys are a great bargain. And then I'd come down here and get some uh, Noble Germanic Horsemen or the Noble Alani Cavalry. They're both very similar units. Uh, slightly cheaper for the Noble Alanis. Um, Health-wise, it's very close. Let's see about armor. Yeah, the same. So you might want to just go with the cheaper ones and upgrade it. So I don't know this for sure, but that'd be my suggestion. I mean, you could take this Noble Lani cab like this and uh, crank out some upgrades on them. I mean, even if you wanted to save a little money, you could do something like that, and they're they're still going to be brutal. Um, and then as far as the rest of your money, I mean, you could you could throw more cab on here. Uh, you could throw a little more infantry. Uh, just I mean, whatever you feel like you need. Uh, you could get uh, more Germanic archers, which are really still quite deadly. Um, or you could just throw in, you know, like a Germanic lancer and another archer. And this is going to be a pretty capable army. Uh, you've got a pretty solid infantry corps. 
Uh, I mean, and I want to say, let's see, so how much more expensive? 100, 100 more expensive. You could get one more Sarmatian Warband if you wanted. Infantry Corps would be somewhat weak. Your Cavalry Corps will be very strong, and your Skirmishing will be very strong, with extra capability from the Alani General and the Germanic Lancers. A possibility. There's other armies. Of course, you'd want to go with the Brace General. That will make your Alani General uh, quite decent in combat. Just an idea. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.